Hello readers, it's Sasha and today I'm going to be doing a video that I am so nervous to do. Oh my god, okay. So this video is going to be exploring the wonderful world of fan fiction. This is not safe for work. This is not safe for parents' ears. This is, please don't watch this if you're a youngin. Just, <laughs> this is going to be very, very, very sexual because if you couldn't tell by the title, I am reading smut. This is my very first time reading smut of any kind. Like I don't read smutty fanfic. I don't read smutty books. I've read like young adult smut and I got to a little bit in red, white, and royal blue, but like not to the degree that I believe these are going to be. So I decided to amp it up a little bit and not just read any fan fiction, but I wanted to read fan fiction for my least favorite couples. I don't know why. I think I like to torture myself a little bit because why the fuck would I read this? Why? Like, I don't I picked three couples and I picked the top three like smutty fanfics that came up when I searched these couples and their fan fictions. So I'm probably not going to read all of them and you're probably only going to get excerpts from each one because I'm not going to read it all out loud for you but this is going to be my live reaction to me reading smutty fanfiction to my least favorite couple. So I guess I should introduce them. So the first couple that I have is anybody from the fifth wave. So when I say that I mean I will literally accept any answer for anybody from the fifth wave because I hated both couples in that. Like she was with an alien and then she was with like a real person. Like, oh, I hated it so much. I Nobody in that story had flavor. My 14 year old ass thought they had flavor. They don't. Thinking back, reflecting, watching the movie, I was like, mm, not for me. So then, number two is Tristan Four from the Divergent series. And I didn't actually realize I didn't like them until I read the Divergent series last August. And I was like, damn, they actually aren't good for each other. They're very toxic. They're very gross. I don't like them together. They're whiny. And didn't love that. So that's another one. And then the couple that is the bane of my existence. Oh my god. And I'm sorry, Darian. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> It's going to be somebody from the Throne of Glass series, and it is going to be... If you have not read the Throne of Glass series yet, I'm saving that till the end. So I guess I'm going to put like a little spoilers here. If you've not read past the third book or the fourth book in the series, then don't watch this one part and you can just skip to the next part. But the couple that I really hate, like literally my least favorite book fictional couple ever, ever, is actually going to be Aelin and Rowan from the Throne of Glass series. I hated their relationship. Like I maybe, I guess maybe it was hate to love, maybe, but I hated their relationship. Like the whole time reading it, I was like, shut the fuck up. And honestly, I could easily just read Empire of Storms for smut scenes for them because that got pornographic very quickly. But I decided I would I would treasure the fan fiction writers and I would read a little bit of fan fiction. Spoilers are over. Now we're just gonna jump into the fifth wave fan fiction. Here we go. This one's called Love and Lust My Mayfly by Assassin's Creed BAMF. A story of Cassie and Evan's first time. Pure smut, so not read if under age of 18. Okay. The nightmares never seemed to leave me. The limp, lifeless body strewn across the streets. I sat paralyzed and useless as Sammy got ripped apart into shreds by Vosh. His cruel, sadistic, ice-blue eyes piercing my soul with challenge. I always awoke screaming in anger, cold sweat dampening my hair. One knock at the door. Cassie? I brushed the sweat off my forehead hot. <laughs> I never understood why they'd be like, oh my god, I'm dripping in pools of sweat. And then like everyone else is like, mm, yeah, like do me. It's like, <laughs> ew, that's gross. Okay. Anyway. Hi, I paused. Can you come in? I stared intently at the brass doorknob waiting for his answer. Yeah. The Evan stood by the door frame awkwardly, his hands shoved into the pockets of his gray sweatpants. Oh, you know it's gonna be good when a man is wearing gray sweatpants. That's like peak attractive. He blushed when he looked at me and quickly glanced back down at the floor, trying to hide his smile. What? I asked, irritated. Evan threw a wild gesture at my top half. I suddenly became very aware of the cool air brushing against my bare skin. Oh, right. I sleep naked. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Evan glanced up at me, a tiny smile dancing at the edge of his lips. He knocked once on the door, his hint of a smile now a full-blown grin. I allowed myself a small smile. Yes, Evan, you can come in. Evan's grin faded as he nears me. Nightmares, he said as if stating a fact. He's right, of course. Do you want me to stay with you? 
I bit my lip, then nodded slowly. I love you, I stated. Evan's eyes widened. What? He murmured, his expression incredulous. So far, there's no smut. Like, where is these mods? I want smut. I love you, I repeated. For a moment, Evan's heart stopped beating, and then he broke into a smile. I love you too, my mayfly. A low growl escaped Evan's throat, his chest rising in short, aroused breaths. The fire in my body spread, becoming hotter and hotter until it was near unbearable. <laughs> I don't like this. I literally put on foundation so I don't look like I'm a tomato the whole time. I broke away from the kiss, panting. The fire continued to grow. Get rid of it, I gasped. Get rid of the fire in me. <laughs> I expected Evan to think I was crazy. Bitch, you are. But I saw my own need mirrored in his own eyes. I realized what I wanted, what I needed. Are you sure? It seemed to take all of Evan's willpower to ask, and I think he might have exploded if I had changed my mind. I gave him a small nod. I want you. Evan rolled me over so I lay on my back, staring up at him. I moaned as his eyelashes fluttered against my skin. His teeth grazed my stomach. Hot? Bringing a type of pleasurable pain? Mmm. <laughs> Evan murmured, his breath hot against me. So beautiful, Cassie. He kissed a small birthmark on my hip bone. So perfect. Evan's voice had become husky, somehow more masculine. Maybe I'll find another birthmark if I look further. <laughs> I clenched my thighs together, afraid Evan would be disappointed with what he saw. Evan's eyes glanced up to meet mine, as if he could read my mind. Mayfly, he whispered gently. I closed my eyes, afraid of what I would see in his eyes. I felt Evan knock once gently on my leg. A choked laugh escaped my mouth, and I opened one eye to look at Evan. He gave me a sexy grin, his dark eyes spiked with desire. Can I come in? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Slowly, I released the tension in my legs. Mmm. <laughs> Evan parted my thighs slowly as if gently trying to approach a deer without scaring it off. He placed a small kiss on the inside of my thigh, and my core pulsed with excitement as he neared it. Hmm, he said as if inspecting something. No birthmark here. Evan placed another kiss, this time on the other leg and even closer to my core. Or here. My legs began to tremble with want as Evan tediously danced closer and closer to where I wanted him. Evan. I moaned my body feeling as if it might spontaneously combust. I wasn't one to plead or beg, but the fire was burning in me with no signs of avail. Evan glanced up at me, one of his eyes cocked slightly. His gorgeous brown eyes held playful question. Yes? I grit my teeth, glaring down at him. Please. Evan's tongue ran across his lips, his breath falling onto my core. Well, okay, I don't like how they're calling this a core. It only made me want him more. Without a word, Evan pulled me to his face, his tongue darting out and licking everywhere it could. One pressed down on me, preventing me from being able to squirm from pleasure. The other hovered over my body and then with sudden intensity... Ah! Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. I arched my back against the mattress. Sure, I had never bent it that far before and let out a scream. <laughs> Evan smiled against me, obeying. I clamped my legs on the side of his head. Clamped is the least sexy word anybody could have used here, <laughs> preventing him from being able to move away from me. The fingers on his free hand continued to torment my... Mm -hmm, and black spots began to dance in my vision from the intense pleasure. Evan's tongue began to gain speed, slowly at first, then faster and faster, dipping into every place in my core. Stop calling it a core! I don't like it! Oh my god! <laughs> my entire back lifted off the bed, arching even more than I thought possible. A white blanket covered my vision, and the pleasure continued. Slowly, I was brought back down from my high to reality. My chest heaved with heavy breaths, and I struggled to force myself back to reality. Evan stood only in his boxers now, an amused grin spreading across his face. Done? 
I managed to muster enough energy to punch him in the stomach. It was like punching a concrete wall. God damn it, I muttered with annoyance. Why do you have to have abs? <laughs> Evan snorted. Definitely Cassie again. Sorry about the inconvenience of the abs, Cassie. I'll try to be fat next time. <laughs> Evan's strong arms lifted me up and moved me so my legs no longer dangled off the bed. Boxers, I said, gesturing at his underwear. Off. Evan grinned, as you wish, and he ripped off his boxers with relish. I slapped my forehead. I couldn't help but stare at his, well, you know. That's literally the way. It was standing out stiff. I let my hand reach out and touch it. It was rock hard. It was also at least nine inches long. I imagine trying to shove him into me. I became aware of Evan watching me again, and I blushed. I didn't take my hand away. I tried to wrap my hand around him, but he was too thick, and my thumb and my middle finger remained a centimeter apart. Evan stiffened, and I glanced up in fear. Did I hurt you? I asked worriedly. The muscle in Evan's jaw jumped. No, he managed with difficulty. Just the opposite. But today was for you. We can get to that stuff later. Cassie. Evan murmured. Cassie, are you sure? I could feel the tip pressing. Oh, no. <laughs> I opened my eyes and looked into Evan's warm, concerned eyes. Desire shone clearly as well, but I knew if I even began to say the word no, Evan would stop without a moment's hesitation. Yes, I took a deep breath. I'm ready. It's going to hurt, Evan whispered, remorse in his voice. I'm going to kiss you, okay? Take a deep breath. I obeyed without question. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cassie. Then all in one movement, Evan pressed his lips hard against mine and thrust hard into me. My eyes widened in shock and agony, and I bit back the scream threatening to spill from my throat. It hurt like a motherfucker. Evan buried his face in the crook of my neck. I'm so, so sorry, Cassie. I didn't answer, instead stroking his dark, soft hair. Slowly, the pain ebbed away, and bits and bits of pleasure began to replace it. I nudged his hips. Are you going to fuck me or what? This seemed to break through Evan's barrier. He wasn't gentle, even if I was a little newbie virgin. <laughs> Forced our hips together, shoving himself deeper and deeper into me each and every time, pulling out slowly before slamming himself down to the hilt in me again. A look of hunger and pleasure overtook Evan's face. Husky groans escaping his throat. Oh God, Cassie, he groaned through clenched teeth. You're so fucking tight. I moaned in appreciation, unable to form human words. Evan's stable rhythm began to grow faster, his skin slapping against mine with each thrust. He intertwined our fingers and grabbed the headboard with his other hand. <laughs> The hand that was no longer intertwined with mine fell to my ass and grabbed it with force, slamming me down on his <clears throat> repeatedly. I had never seen Evan this aggressive before and it only turned me on even more. This is so weird, guys. This is so weird. Oh God, Evan, I cried as he repeatedly pounded into that sweet, magical spot again and again. The black spots in my vision increased and girl, see a fucking doctor. And the pleasure rocked me from inside out. I bit into Evan's shoulder in an attempt to hold on just a bit longer. I teetered on the edge and then, oh fuck, I screamed as waves and waves of pleasure rushed through me. As I drifted down from my high, Evan with a growl pounded even harder and faster into me. In less than three seconds, Evan had had me nearing my peak again, still repeatedly hitting that sweet spot again and again. The pleasure rocketed throughout my entire body, reducing me to mush. As I descended from yet another high, I became aware of Evan tensing above me, heard him groan loudly and then shudder violently, filling my tummy with a burning, scalding heat unlike anything I had ever felt before. I lost all my strength then, letting go of Evan as he collapsed and rolled next to me, his chest heaving with pants. I fell back against the pillows, allowing my eyes to close. I opened my eyes again, turning to my side so I could see Evan's face. Beads of sweat ran down his strong jawline and he shot me a small smile. I must have been good to have you knocked out for a good two minutes. I rolled my eyes, too tired for a snarky comeback. Yeah, yeah, asshole. Evan winked. We'll save that one for next time. Evan's cheeky. Ugh, I slapped my forehead. Oh God, Evan, I growled in exasperation. Evan smiled. That's what you've been saying all night. Not that I've minded. Go to sleep, Evan. 
I growled, bashing him in the face with my pillow. Love you too, he muttered. He wrapped me up in his arms anyway. No more nightmares, he said solemnly. No more nightmares, I agreed. I received a snore in response. Evan? Quiet breathing. Evan had fallen asleep. Love our conversations. And in the dark room, I thought I gave him a smile. So I have several situations with this. Okay, so first and foremost, what the fuck? Uh, second, so she starts off this whole adventure with having nightmares of her brother literally getting torn to shreds. And then she's like, do you know what'll make me feel better? This dick. That was fic one. I'm only going to read one of each couple because I don't think my entire life could handle this anymore. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, what if somebody from my work found this? So that's awkward. <laughs> hope not but like we'll see <laughs> okay so the next one i'm gonna read is divergent and i would like it to be shorter <laughs> so this is actually called in the shower by cjg williams four has had a really bad day and decides to drown his sorrows in the shower one shot i don't know what one shot means i wish it was a shot of vodka because i think that would numb myself throughout all of this four stepped into the shower and groaned as the warm water streamed over his fatigued muscles the only perk to leadership, undoubtedly, was the apartment. The master bathroom attached to his bedroom was huge, with double sinks at the vanity, a deep soaking tub, and a large walk-in shower. And if that ain't the dream, because I don't know what is. I'm actually gonna say, this is really well written and really well crafted because it ties into the story really nicely. <laughs> so 10 out of 10 CJG Williams, like you're, you're killing it. Since becoming leaders, all of them had been challenged in one way or another. They had faced more than one fight from other Dauntless wanting to go back to Max's way of running things. It was what the asshole who jumped four from behind had said when he took four by surprise in the chasm. He'd knocked four into the wall from behind, hoping to catch him off guard. By the time the fight was over, the Dauntless member was nearly unconscious. As usual, after a fight, he felt hollowed out, drained both physically and emotionally. Four didn't like to fight. He was good at it, exceptionally so, but it was not something he enjoyed. Behind him, he heard the glass door of the shower open and a rush of cool air mixed in with the water. Goosebumps rose on his skin, but were immediately soothed by the hands that encircled his waist. Soft lips caressed the tattoo on his back. He straightened up and dropped his hands from the tile to cover hers. Triss kissed his shoulder blades. Do you want to talk about it? He sighed. Not much to tell. Hank decided to express his displeasure at the new direction of Dauntless. He was silent for a moment, enjoying the warmth of her body pressed against his back. Is he okay? He asked quietly. Yes, he regained consciousness right after he got to the infirmary. Harrison personally came down to kick him out of Dauntless. He'll leave in a couple of days. She ran her hands soothingly up his back, then down again. She moved him around his waist again, then let her fingers drift downwards. She reached her goal and four let out a groan. Triss, shh, she whispered. Just relax, Tobias. It's just us here, just you and me. He sighed and pushed himself more firmly into her hand. That's all I ever want. She caressed his skin with her lips, her fingers trailing teasingly up and down his length. She felt his body shudder as a different kind of tension replaced the depressed one she'd seen through the shower glass. She smiled as she brought her other hand into play, gently rolling- Oh, ooh, okay, that's spicy. Gently rolling his balls in her hand. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just Triss shifted so she could grasp him in her fist moving up and down firmly. His hips jerked against her as he hissed, Jesus. She smiled, flitting her tongue out to caress the alternatively smooth and rough skin on his back. The scars from his childhood had faded over time and were now only an interesting texture to his strongly muscled back. She felt him grow harder and loving her effect on him increased her grip. Tobias suddenly grasped her hands, turning around quickly and pulled her into his arms. His lips came down firmly on hers. She opened her eyes and looked up at him. His deep blue eyes were nearly black with desire. The water bounced off his strong shoulders and ran along his collarbone, down his defined pecs. He traced her hands up his biceps, the water allowing her hands to glide smoothly. She moved over his shoulders to wrap around his neck. She played with the wet curls at the base of his head as they kissed. She let her lips trail across his cheek and down the side of his neck. She alternatively kissed and nibbled her way down his body as she sank to her knees. She looked up at him, the water flowing over her hair. Keeping her eyes on him, she gently pushed him back until he was resting on the wall. Then she took him into her mouth. That is not very Christian, okay. Tobias gave a harsh intake of breath as Triss's warm mouth surrounded him. His hands buried themselves in her hair as she licked a trail up the bottom of his, ooh, no. Triss tightened her mouth around him as she slowly pulled back, ran her tongue around the tip and began the process all over again. Disgusting! She'd perfected her technique in the months they'd been together so she knew exactly how far she could push him. Triss, he grasped, warning her, his hands 
urging her to stand. He loved when she went down on him, but he infinitely preferred coming inside her. So he usually stopped things before he lost complete control. Triss stood and Tobias pulled her to him, kissing her. His kiss was deep, passionate, and overwhelming. Triss was surprised to feel the cool tiles against her back and realized he'd managed to reverse their positions. So she was pressed against the wall of the shower. Tobias squeezed her hips, his hand now teasingly moving to bury itself in her. I am not saying that. That is disgusting. Now it was her turn to groan as his fingers teased her flesh. She pulled his head down to kiss him. Tobias' long, graceful fingers went to good use. Oh my god! <music> Smiling against her mouth, he reached down, picking her up. She wrapped her legs around him and he slowly sank into her. They groaned in unison, neither noticing that the water had gotten just a little bit colder. Triss's body was warm and welcoming, soft after her orgasm. It wouldn't take much to set her off again, he knew. He pulled back and slammed back into her, causing her back to slide up the tiles a little. She cried out in delight as he set up a fast pace. They were moaning, gasping, as each pushed the other higher and higher, closer to the edge. Tobias leaned forward, nibbling on the juncture of her neck and shoulder, which he knew was her favorite spot. He was rewarded with her shudder and her tightening of her inner muscles. <sighs> So it ends kind of abruptly. And then it talks about them getting engaged. Well, that was something. So the last one is going to be a spoiler for if you have not read the full Throne of Glass series. So if you haven't, click out now. Thank you for tuning in. And please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I do post more content and not all of it is NSFW. So you should be fine to subscribe to me. And I will see you next time if you haven't read all the way through or at least finished book three of Throne of Glass. But if you have, please stay tuned because I'm about to read about the bane of my existence, the couple that I literally hated from the get-go. And that would be Rowan and Aelin. So this is a very small one from Tumblr, and I figured the smaller the better because I'm honestly getting a little bit like overwhelmed with this because I really like reading fluff. I like reading soft things. I like when they're like, let's hug for the first time. I get giddy. But when they're like, let's fuck for the first time, I'm like, ugh. No, don't. So I think this one starts right away into this. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this was just an excerpt straight from Empire of Storms because that shit is this. It's porn. OK, Aelin was slammed back against the tree, bark and branches and leaves showering down on her and Rowan. His mouth was on her jaw, her neck. I don't even know that word. Laving her collarbone, hands pulling on her pants so hard that her hips slammed into his. She reached down to help him, tearing the drawstring that held them and laughing. She would have to hold her pants up on their way home, but that didn't matter now. All that mattered was that her mate was going to fuck her here against this tree. Reaching up, Rowan slid his hands up her sides and she raised her arms, letting her take off her light cotton tunic and the remaining piece of clothing she wore. She leaned back against the tree and he looked her upside down, clasping her hands behind herself. She grinned, waiting for him to stop looking and touch her again. Are you sure about this? Dorian and Manon might show up at any minute. Looking around, Aelin shrugged. She pulled him down to meet her mouth and he grabbed her ass lifting her off the ground and wrapping her legs around his waist. Aelin reached down and pushed his pants over his hips, trying to position him at her entrance, but he refused to thrust. She whined inadvertently, then paused. No, she wouldn't give in that easily. After all, she was the one naked in his arms, and if his something was any indication, he wanted this as much as she did, so she waited. Rowan returned his attention to her neck, then her breasts, nipping and biting and leaving marks in his path while Aelin grew more and more impatient. Grabbing a handful of his hair, she pulled his lips away from her skin. Now. Rowan cocked his head, and she dug her heels into his ass, urging him to press into her, to fuck her without regard for the bark being embedded in her back. Wow, so sexy. <laughs> Or the fact that they might soon be interrupted. But he waited. What do you want, princess? I want you to stop messing around and fuck me, bastard. Rowan reached down and stroked her something. Spreading her- Nope. Nope. I'm not reading that out loud. <laughs> Holding his- there. He waited a moment before he finally thrust into her and she cried out, saying his name, cursing, saying every word that came to mind while he slammed his hips into hers and kept pressure on her with his thumb, rubbing and taunting, changing his pace just enough to keep her at the edge without going over. Aelin pulled the handful of his hair to tilt his head to the side. She ran her tongue up the side of his neck and he growled. She smiled in satisfaction and bit him, her teeth leaving the same marks in him that his had in her. He finally pushed her to the edge at that, giving in to what they both needed and she came, screaming his name, toes curling, fingernails digging into his back. 
Outdoor sex had always been a part of Rowan and Aelin's routine, and so when Manon and Dorian happened upon them picking up the scattered remnants of Aelin's clothing, Manon didn't wait a beat before asking him just how, exactly, they determined which places were and weren't appropriate for sex. Okay, I find that very funny, actually. So this was actually written by Books of Mirth on Tumblr. So, that is it. I can't do any more. That is too much. So essentially... But yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all I have today. Yes, I feel very gross. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. And if you have stayed all the way till the very end, thank you very much. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content, hopefully twice a week. And until next time, bye readers.